So if you've been following the channel for some time now, you'll know that I have sold my Mini JCW and I was really sorry to see that car go. I've owned it for the last three and a half years and it's been brilliant all around. It's just been a fantastic car to own. However, it's time to move on to new things and I'm very pleased to introduce you to my 2008 BMW Z4 Coupe 3 liter SI. So why the E86 Z4 Coupe then? Well, to be honest, I think this is probably one of the forgotten BMWs. I mean, you know, this is just a fantastic car and even on paper, it sounds brilliant, to be honest. We've got the N52 engine and we will get onto that a little bit later, but it's a three litre straight six paired to a six speed manual rear wheel drive. I mean, what more do you want? And to be honest, I've been looking at older cars. I mean, those of you who've been following a lot of my videos will probably realize that new cars just aren't something that massively interests me anymore, at least at the price point that I'm looking at, because unless you go into the high end offerings of, you know, Porsche and BMW, there's really nothing that amazing to be honest and that engaging to drive, which is really what I'm bothered about. So I think first things first with this car is just the looks. Obviously this is a very subjective thing, but to me, I think it's an absolutely stunning looking car. Now, you know, we've got that big front bonnet, big sloping roof line, we even got a double bubble in the roof as well, obviously a homage to sort of older race cars and things, which provides a ton of headroom in the, uh, in the interior. So I think it's a fantastic looking car. It's a bit kind of a cross between GT, probably a mini GT and, you know, sports car. So yeah, overall, I think the design's brilliant. On mine, you can see I've got these 18 inch Z4 M wheels. These were fitted by the previous owner. And to be honest, I think they look great. Some of the wheels that came on these cars did date it a little bit. This is a 2008 car, so you know it's getting on 12 or 13 years old at this point. Uh, but to be honest, the design is really timeless to me. I, I don't think it's aged at all. If you told me this car was made in say 2015, I'd probably actually believe it. So yeah, the looks are something that really sold me as well as the drivetrain package, I suppose, on paper. And I can tell you from the times I've driven it so far, it's been absolutely amazing. And stay tuned uh, for the review on this because it will be coming very, very soon. So what is it about the E86 Z4 Coupe then that I think makes it a forgotten BMW? Well, there's a number of things to be honest. I mean, for a start, I totally overlooked it. And, you know, I was, I was looking at stuff kind of that predated this, to be honest, I'd forgotten all about this car. And it was only because of a video that James Martin of JM on Cars did not too long ago covering one of these cars that drew my attention to it. And then looking at the stats on paper, I was like, this ticks every single box that I'm after. So I started to look at them quite seriously but there really are not many of them about. And I think that's one of the other reasons that you don't really see them anywhere and perhaps they're a bit forgotten. In the UK, there was only about 260 manual coupes that came. And I think including all the automatics, it was around about 390 in total. Now, one of the stats you might've heard is that for every 11 Z4 Roadsters built, only one Z4 coupe was built. So it gives you an idea of the rarity. I'm not sure about build numbers across the world, but you know, it's, it's fairly small numbers, especially for BMW. So you certainly do not see many of these cars around, you know, especially 12 years on. So there are some pretty significant differences actually between the Z4 Coupe and Z4 Roadster. There's a lot of things that changed. I mean, just the addition of that roof and, you know, for the avoidance of doubt, that is a fully fixed roof. It doesn't fall down. It's not like a hard top convertible. So it is structural. And actually this car is literally twice as rigid as the Z4 Roadster, which is a huge difference. And people have talked about scuttle shake on the Z4 Roadsters as well. And yeah, I mean, this car feels extremely tight. Of course, you've got quite a wide track on this. So it just feels phenomenal on the road. The, the mechanical grip is really impressive and the whole chassis just feels really, really good. So just for a bit of perspective, actually, when these cars came out, they were, they were built between 2006 and 2009. So it's a relatively short period of time. 
and when they came out they were around about thirty thousand pounds i think this car as specs was just under thirty six thousand pounds which in today's money is around about 50 grand so it gives you an idea and they've certainly held the value pretty well you, you can get in these really now for as cheap as probably five or six thousand pounds for the high mileage ones anywhere up to probably 17 or eighteen thousand pounds so you know there's quite a wide spectrum my car has been pretty well looked after i think it's had about four owners done 55,000 miles so you know it's in pretty good condition and that's really what i was looking for really surprised at the paint paint actually on you know such an older car um just fantastic condition so yeah i'm i'm really really pleased with this car overall <laughs> hopefully you can tell that i'm really excited to be able to share it with you So this right here is the beating heart of this car, if you like, the N52 B30. This is a last of the line, naturally aspirated straight six petrol engine from BMW. There was one after this, the N53, but really there wasn't much change between the N52 and 53. So yeah, I mean, it really is a magnificent engine. Three litre naturally aspirated straight six. It makes 265 horsepower at 6,600 RPM, 232 foot pounds of torque at 2750 rpm now if you know anything about engines that is a ridiculous point in the rev range for a naturally aspirated engine to make peak torque usually naturally aspirated engine is making peak torque way higher up this engine revs to 7000 rpm so to make peak torque down in the sort of high 2000s yeah that's that's really quite something now i'm not going to get too technical with this i mean this engine probably deserves a review all in itself to be honest it's got double vanos, which means variable valve timing on the intake and exhaust camshafts. It's also got valve tronic, which is variable valve lift. And basically these things allow this engine to breathe really, really well. And yeah, that ultimately leads to fantastic performance, um, you know, both from a power perspective and economy, actually. This engine will do quite easily 30 miles per gallon on longer journeys, which, you know, unheard of really in these old naturally aspirated engines. So yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Obviously you get really, really good induction noise. There's a cool thing about these Z4 coupes and actually Z4s in general, they have a sound generator pipe that runs from the airbox through to the cabin. Now this isn't like the modern day BMW sound generators where it's just augmented noise through the speakers. This is literally a pipe running from the airbox into the cabin to feed you induction noise. Now that's something I wish BMW would take a note of and do today because it would make a huge difference to how their cars sound. Another thing you can probably see under here is the strut brace running from each suspension tower there. Again, just helping to improve rigidity in this thing. So yeah, I'm, <laughs> this drivetrain is really something special. And again, I'll save this for the review. I might just give you a little snippet in this video, but yeah, we need to get into this more at some point because it's really something quite special. So the interior of the Z4 Coupe then great place to be i know that's something that a lot of people say but you know it, it really is nice in here again it's not something that is particularly aged as much as you would think in 13 years my car is spec with the sort of sat nav system a lot of people don't really like that because they and it, it does kind of age the cabin a little bit but it all works and actually it doesn't bother me too much it doesn't look ridiculously outdated it's just of the time and i'm perfectly okay with that i don't really mind that because that's why i'm buying the car anyway so yeah it's really nice in here these great sort of leather sport seats these are the m sport seats fully electric with memory function loads of adjustability in them i've i picked this car up from london so i drove a few hundred miles back up here to the northeast and it was perfectly comfortable no issues at all so yeah can't really fault them at all of course we've got the gearbox six speed manual it's a nice kind of tight shift in this i believe it's the same gearbox as the z4m actually so yeah i mean works really well it's nice to use a little bit notchy when it's cold but when it warms up it's a little bit smoother steering wheel again pretty good i mean it's it's not too fat a rim this is one thing of course you notice with all the bmws is you know steering wheels are much much better you can easily reach around this, this is significantly thinner than the modern stuff so that works brilliantly one of the really nice things about the z4 is basically everything in here is pretty much bespoke to this car the steering wheel the dials you know just just everything the way it's done the way it's designed it's not just stolen from other models like we see today where everything's just crossed over and it's difficult to determine which is which 
So in a kind of a two-door coupe, a lot of people might be concerned about visibility, but it's actually really good. We've got a window behind me there, which is quite easy to see out of, even in the rear view mirror. And with these kind of windows that sit behind the doors, you can see over the blind spots easily as well. So it works brilliantly, it's very easy to drive. Anyone could jump in this car really. So yeah, I couldn't really fault the interior. So that's that then, that is the first look at my Z4 Coupe. As I say, I'm, I'm genuinely over the moon with this car. I just, <laughs> I stumbled across it by chance. It just takes every box I wanted. It, it just does everything really, really well. And I honestly can't wait to drive it more. I haven't driven it tons yet, especially not on kind of good driving roads. So I want to do a bit more of that first before we kind of get into review and talk about what it's like to drive. But first impressions are brilliant. And as I say, you know, it does everything I want it to do. So I hope you've enjoyed this kind of first look at it. I hope you're going to continue joining me kind of on this journey with the Z4 Coupe. Of course, there's loads of stuff planned with this. We've got the usual array of videos and there'll be some additional things in there as well. So yeah. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.